Catch and Release is designed to minimize harm to archaeological resources by integrating uh, cultural protocols and values into like our surface collection practices. Catch and Release is premised on the idea that one, it's important to have this information, but it's also important to collect the information in a manner that's consistent with the values and cultural protocols of the tribal nation in which we're working with. So while we do collect artifacts, all of those artifacts are returned back to the ground after their complete study and documentation. For us to introduce students to techniques like catch and release or geophysical survey or any of the other minimally invasive or non-invasive methods is to introduce to them like the ways in which different archaeological methods and techniques can be applicable, to teach them the context in which those methods are okay to use, and then also teach them when certain kinds of methods are not okay or don't represent the best possible course of action uh, for somebody working with tribal cultural resources. The idea of doing surface collection right is not, rather than just looking on the surface, where sometimes visibility can be fairly poor, uh, we excavate just that top sod layer in sort of active soil environments like here uh, to get a sense of the type of uh, material and, and the sediment that's sort of just at the surface or just below surface. Uh, so to do that, remember we're doing a 4% uh, sample within a stratified, random, unaligned uh, strategy. How this works is we're gonna, we've already divided our site into 20 by 20 uh, blocks. So what I've done here is I've taken a 20 by 20 and divided it uh, into uh, one by ones, which are each individual square, and five by fives, which are between uh, the pen marks. And within each of those uh, five by fives, we're going to randomly select one one by one to do surface collection on. Often in our minds we think that random is the same thing as distributed. They're not. Distributed is not random. True random sample probably would have certain clusters and we might miss a part of the site. We want to make sure that we get at least a little bit of all the parts of the site. So it's important here at Field Methods in Indigenous Archaeology that students have a full understanding of you know, what are the concerns that the Tribal Historic Preservation Office has? What are the concerns that community brings to them about the practice of archaeology? But a significant part of that goal is to also build the capacity of archaeologists in training to understand what it means to do archaeology uh, with a tribal community. We often think though that archaeology is one of the best ways that we can use to preserve and protect those resources um, even if they've been removed from the ground and that differs significantly from some of the indigenous values and perspectives of communities here in North America as well as across the world where they see the proper role and place of those materials is within the areas in which they were initially deposited.